the way you start a React project has changed. It used to be that you'd use Create React app, and you may be seeing in a lot of tutorials out there that this is the way they recommend you starting a React application. Today, I want to show you the easiest way to start a React project that's going to be really similar to Create React app, and it will probably work with all of these tutorials, so you can skip this Create React app step but just use this way instead. And then you can follow along with the rest of the tutorial as it's the most one-to-one -one comparison. However, I then wanna jump into why you might want to use a React framework instead. Now, I recommend you actually learn without a framework first. And that's because I want you to sort of get to know what React has to offer. And I don't want you to think that something is a feature of React when it's actually a feature of a React framework. Now, if this is confusing, I'll explain what frameworks are later. But first, let's jump into that really quick way to start a React application that's really similar to create React app. So the way we're going to be doing this is using Vite. So as you can see here, it's going to be scaffolding your first Vite project. And all you need to do is copy and paste this command down here. So it's going to be npm create Vite at latest. Or if you're on pmpm, which I am, it's going to be pmpm create Vite. All we need to do is paste in that command. And it's going to ask you a couple of questions. It's going to ask you to name it. I'm just going to name it my app. And then it's going to ask you the framework you want to use. Now, I'm going to select React here. You can use this with Spell and other things, but as this is a React tutorial, we're going to be using React here. And next, it's going to ask you whether you want to use TypeScript, JavaScript, or Remix. I won't jump into what SWC is in this video, and I'm going to touch on briefly what Remix is at the end, as that's a framework. That's a React framework. So what we're going to do is I'm going to select TypeScript, so that's the one I want. Next, all you need to do is go into that folder that is created there for you. So that's going to be CD and then my dash app and then you're going to want to install your dependencies however you would so it's either going to be npm install or pmpm install for those popular ones and then once that's done all we need to do is first we can open this up in vs code by doing code dot and that's going to open up vs code where we are and as you can see over here what we've got is my app and it has that basic starter file so it has our index.html which is just going to be that empty in uh, html that's then going to load in the scripts that we want it's going to have that main.tsx, which is going to load in our React application. And then the app.tsx is where they put the code, some of the beginner code for you to just show you that the application's working. So if I start a new terminal up here and I do pmpm run dev, that's going to start the dev server. And we can now navigate to localhost 5173. And you'll see that we've got a basic React application ready to go. And it has a counter down here again, just to sort of show you that it's working. And that is Vite for you. Now, Vite's really cool. It's really quick and it has hot module reloading. Now, what hot module reloading here is, as it says, is all you have to do is make an edit and save it. So if I say hello and then let's say subscribe, which you should do, um, if we save that and then open up our website again, you'll see that it's, it's reloaded really quickly there on the other end. You didn't have to reload anything up here or restart any commands or anything. It will handle that for you. Even if you're installing modules and various things like that, it's really good for that. And V is super fast. If you've used to create React app and Webpack when you build, it might take a while, but V, it will get that time down massively. It's really quick. In one of my projects, it took the build down from eight minutes to a minute. And it's just really awesome. As I said, this is the most sort of pure React way. This is going to be the way that's really similar to Create React App. So if you're following a tutorial that's using Create React App, you can still go ahead and follow the rest of the tutorial when you build started with V instead. But now let's touch on frameworks. We go over to the react.dev, which is that new documentation. You'll see it says start a new React project. And what it says is they recommend picking one of their React powered frameworks popular in the community. And it does have a deep dive here in can I use React without a framework? And essentially what they touch on in this block of text here, and I'll leave a link so you can read this yourself, is that what happened with React applications and create React app is we all sort of built the same thing. So we ended up building in our data fetching and our routing in similar ways, but it, it varies slightly as everyone had their own implementation. And it, it sort of got a bit messy in that way. So what frameworks do is they add on top of React and they add the things like routing and data fetching. And obviously some really smart people have built these things so you don't have to worry about it yourself. And you know that you're using the right methods to do so. And you, everyone else is using a similar method if they're on that same framework. Whereas before, some people may have been using React Router, some people may have been using a custom solution they built, and pretty much everyone was ending up building out their own mini framework that they liked and had their own template, and it just sort of got a bit messy. So that's where these frameworks stepped in and said, we'll build on top of React, and we'll add in these features for you, and sort of standardize it in a way. But obviously, there are various solutions as there are multiple frameworks. So that's pretty much what this is going to touch on here, and you can go ahead and read into it. 
but let's touch on what those frameworks are. So we've got Next.js here, which all you need to do is start with this command down here. As it said, the uses the pages router is a full stack framework, and it's essentially allows you to get started with any application from a static blog to a dynamic application. It's the one I personally use. I have 15 or so sites that are built with Next.js, and I really like it. It's super speedy. Now, this is you saying use the pages router, but if we scroll down, you'll see that it actually says with the bleeding edge React frameworks, um, Next.js app router is the one you want to use. Now, App Router uses React server components, which if you're a beginner, this might be a bit of an overload for you. I'll leave a link in the description below that explains everything of what React server components are, so you can touch on that. But if you're a beginner, you're probably going to want to skip that and just get learning React now. So this is a bit more if you're a bit more advanced with React and you want to know what's going on sort of in the latest uh, React stuff. And the next one I'm going to touch on is Remix, as it's the really other popular one, which is MPX Create Remix. Now, this was actually started by the team that created React Router. As, as I said, they sort of ran into those similar problems that I mentioned before, where everyone was building out their own sort of library. And they built out their own framework to add sort of that data fetching layer on top. And it's actually maintained by Shopify, as you can see down here. So I would say that Next.js and Remix are the two big options you're going to want to pick. Or as I said, Gatsby down here, I have used Gatsby before, but I believe it's being a bit unmaintained now. I'd actually recommend using Astro for a similar circumstance, but I can't touch on all of these in these videos as they're all so different in sort of the way they implement different data fetching and stuff, but they're all based on React. So if you have React knowledge, so get started with V, learn the React stuff, and then you can take it into these frameworks. And if you don't like one framework, you can switch over to the other one as you already know React. So you should know most of the concepts that come with it. Now, as I said, I use Next.js. That's the one I like. But to be honest, if you're picking one, just pick one and, and go with it and see if you like it. And then maybe if you run into some shortfalls, see how the other framework does it and see if you prefer that one better. And another good thing to do is just look in the job market. If you're looking for a job, if you're a beginner and you hope to get a job one day, see what people in, in your area are using. Uh, I know a lot of people in my area like Next.js. So that's the one I learned as well. And as I said, it's the one I like because it has really easy hosting with it for sale. So you can actually push your application straight up to the cell and it hosts it for you. As that's the other sort of important thing to remember with frameworks is these frameworks are actually built around a server. So you need a live server to be hosting these things. Um, they can run serverless, but essentially you need some server architecture to push the application to your users. With V and Create React App, it's more static. You'll get a single index.html and it's a single page application as React was built for. And then you'll get your JavaScript and you'll load that in and that will all be client side rendered. With these frameworks, it's a bit different. You can, however, in both of them still do a static export mode and Remix recently added their single page application mode. But to be honest, you're not going to want to be doing this if this is what you're building out and you want to sort of follow the latest and the most recommended way of doing things. But that's all a bit too much for a beginner. As I said, if you're beginning with React, start with the learn everything that React has to offer. And when you run into things like how you want to do data fetching and page routing, look at what a framework has to offer and then get started with both of these. They both have really good websites on getting started and they have great documentation. There'll be loads of tutorials out and I hope to make my own tutorial. So let me know if you want to see that and subscribe if you don't want to miss that. And that's pretty much everything that I have to say about the way you can start a React application in 2024. If you want to see any other content please do leave a comment down below if you have any more questions also leave a comment down below and as always please subscribe thank you very much for watching